Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Tuesday, March 5th, second show of the day. It is NFL franchise tag deadline day. 4 p.m. Eastern time is the deadline for teams to franchise tag players. Obviously, the Jags have a lot going on with that. Already did our primer, but we have news here. The Jaguars are planning to release cornerback Darius Williams, according to pretty much everyone on the internet. There it is, though. Williams will save the Jaguars $11.5 million in 2024 salary cap space, according to OverTheCap.com. The Jaguars, after releasing Williams, releasing Foley Fatukasi, should now have over $40 million in 2024 cap space. I know some folks have been asking, maybe they're trying to see if someone will uh, bite on a trade for Darius Williams. That is possible. It, it is. But I doubt it, quite quite frankly, because with his age, you know, over 30 years old now, contract structure, uh, which basically only one year left on the deal, has about a $12 million cap hit. If anything, Maybe it would be a sixth or seventh round pick, probably a seventh. But either way, they are moving on from Darius Williams. If they do get a trade done with someone, it would be, uh, you know, for very little in return. Uh, big decisions ahead now with Josh Allen, with Calvin Ridley. You've cleared up more cap space to try to retain both of those guys to try to be able to improve your roster. I don't think the Jaguars are done with their cap saving moves. You still have several other cap. Uh, cut candidates that we have talked about here on the show. Don't think Cam Robinson's going anywhere. Mark Long did tweet out that he believes Brandon Sheriff will be kept, but Sheriff would save them uh, over $9 million in cap space. You have Rayshon Jenkins, who would save them over $5 million. You have uh, Zay Jones, who would save them over $4 million. Foye Aluk, and I doubt he's going to be cut because he's just too vital to that defense, and there's a massive dead money uh, attached to his contract, but he would save the team over $7 million. So I don't think the Jaguars are done. I think the most likely guys now are Zay Jones and Rayshon Jenkins. Uh, I would have liked to restructure Darius Williams, quite frankly, but I do get it. He is an older player, doesn't look like a prototypical press corner. That is the style of defense that Ryan Nielsen wants to bring in here. He wants guys that are big, physical, uh, can shut it down at the line of scrimmage, can carry receivers deep as well. He doesn't want to give up anything cheap or anything deep, nothing short, nothing deep. You want to make teams kind of focus on being, uh, if you think about it in the NBA, right, teams that have to shoot long-range Two pointers, you know, the mid range game is the least efficient uh, shot in, in basketball. That's also the least efficient play in football, right? Because if you're taking deep shots all day, you don't have to hit them all the time. But if you do, you're going to have big chunk yardage, right? And the short stuff, you can kind of matriculate the ball down the field, if you will, if you have an efficient short game. Mid range is a difficult world to live in. And that's exactly what Ryan Nielsen wants offenses to have to do against his defense. Cornerback is now officially the biggest need on the roster tied with center right there at the top, in my opinion, uh, talking about the, the corners that are still on the roster. Tyson Campbell is the only good starter now, and he's got to prove that he can thrive in press man, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, you know he can do press bail. He can play off coverage, uh, but he's got to prove that in man coverage, he can stay in phase and get those eyes turned around to be able to play the football in the air. That's something he struggled to do early in his career. You've seen some improvements. Obviously, was playing through injury last year, so I know a lot of folks are kind of down on Tyson Campbell. I'm not down on Tyson Campbell at all. I still think he is a really good young cornerback in the NFL that was just trying to battle through injury in 2023. But yeah, I think in this in this defense, he's got to prove that he is a, an alpha uh, cornerback. And of course, he's going into the final year of his rookie deal. He's the type of player that I think with his work ethic, his skill set, I would look to be extending him early. I've talked about that. I think Trevor Lawrence, all these guys from 2021, Trevor uh, Tyson Campbell, Andre Sisco, Travis Etienne, if you can get a reasonable deal, you don't want to overpay at running back, obviously. Something under $10 million, he probably wouldn't agree to it. But maybe even Walker Little, if you can get a discount on him because he hasn't started, these are the type of guys I'd be looking to. You know, you drafted well in 2021, build around these guys in the future. But getting back to this cornerback room, Tyson Campbell now is the only good starter you have. And when you look at the depth, the other starters right now, Buster Brown would be your starting cornerback opposite Tyson Campbell. You'd probably have Gregory Jr. in the slot. Uh, that's not good. Antonio Johnson, I know everyone wants to say he's going to be the nickel of the future. He's a safety or a run package nickel. He's a big nickel. 
at at most. He's not going to be a a three down nickel player for you. I think he's going to be your starting safety that can do some big nickel stuff for you. Starting strong safety opposite uh, Andre Cisco or next to Andre Cisco because I think they're going to move on from Rayshon Jenkins. You know Trey Herndon, who's been your starting nickel for a long time here, he is set to be a free agent as well. Buster Brown to me should not be a starter in any way, shape, or form. He is quality depth at best, right? Gregory Jr., maybe he does have a future as a starting nickel in this league, but he battled through injuries in year one, um, did some for you last year when, when Trey Herndon was hurt. You don't really know yet what you have in Gregory Jr. Yeah, he's a good athlete for sure. Uh, maybe he can play nickel uh, for you long term, but I think if you're just banking on that going into 2024, that's a mistake. Do you expect Chris Braswell or Eric Hallett to really uh, be that guy on the outside next year? I don't. Uh, so I think you have to address this in free agency and in the draft now at the cornerback position. Looking at free agency, there's a lot of corners that could make sense for the Jaguars. Two that I really think could make a lot of sense are Chidobe Awuzie from the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a guy that is in his prime. He's got very good size, very good athleticism, has experience playing press man coverage, uh, has played really well You know, coming back from uh, an ACL a couple years ago. I think that he's the type of guy that could make sense, You know, not a... Not a not going to be like a high priced free agent, but kind of a mid tier cornerback contract, mid tier starting cornerback contract, I should say. Uh, if you could get a guy like that, that makes sense. Um, Jeff Okuda, that would be a low risk flyer, I think, at this point. He is young, he's extremely talented, has had struggles staying healthy in his uh, young career. A guy that you know, former top five draft pick, great pedigree, great skill. Just has to be able to stay healthy. And if you take a low-risk flyer on someone like that, I think that could make sense as well. You wouldn't be paying him much. You'd just be bringing him here uh, to try to see if he can compete to start for you um, in 2024 and beyond. And you could end up getting a guy that, that can start for you for a long time if he can just figure out how to stay healthy. But I think it's definitely going to be addressed in the draft in the first couple rounds at the very least. I don't think they're locked in at 17 overall by any stretch to taking a corner, but there could be some quality options there. I think you talk about Terion Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Kool-Aid McKinstry. I think those guys would make sense at 17 or even in a trade down. You look at Terion Arnold, did not have the fastest 40 time, but everything else was electric. You look at the tape over the back half of the 2023 uh, season for him at Alabama. He was awesome. Kool-Aid McKinstry has been just so steady for the last three years. Just does have a Jones fracture in his foot, so you're going to have to see how that plays out, see if that is uh, able to get you know healed up and, and when he'll be ready to go. But a really talented press man corner with great length. Quinion Mitchell, he's been the riser of the draft. I think he is CB1 at this point. 4-3-3, 40-yard dash. Lights out at Toledo the last two years, went to the Senior Bowl, played more press man coverage, more varied coverages. You know, he was always playing off at Toledo, off coverage, and he was able to just kind of read uh, what was happening in front of him and, and close on the ball and pick off a lot of passes. But I, I think that he can do it in any system at the NFL level. He's made of the right stuff to play cornerback. He's very physical. He's got the requisite size and a great athlete. So I think Quinion Mitchell would be fantastic if he falls. But again, I think he's going to end up being CB1. I think Terion Arnold is going to be CB2 off the board. Um, Kool-Aid McKinstry, we'll see where he goes. I'm not as high on Nate Wiggins, even though he ran that 4.29 40-yard dash. Doesn't have as much length as you would expect uh, for a guy that, that's as tall as he is, has shorter arms. You know, Terion Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Kool-Aid McKinstry are all shorter than him, but have more length. And same as Ennis Rakestraw, for that matter. Uh, so I'm not as high on Wiggins. I think that he's way too light, 173 pounds struggles with physicality, struggles to make tackles. I think that's something that worries you in a press man scheme at the next level. Uh, Ennis Rakestraw, I mentioned, he had a groin injury, so hopefully he can get out there and test better at his pro day. Uh, but to me, more of a late first, early second round type of grade at this point. But I do like his game a lot. I think he can definitely survive in a press man scheme. Uh, TJ Tampa, these are guys that are a little bit later on now. I think in the second round, third round potentially. TJ Tampa makes a lot of sense out of Iowa State. He is a big physical athlete at the cornerback position. Got very good length. Renardo Green, one of my guys in this 2024 NFL draft cycle. I think he is going to be an ace press man corner at the next level out of Florida State. His teammate 
teammate, Jerry and Jones, who played a lot of nickel for the Seminoles, can also play outside. Tremendous athlete, ran a 4-3-8, 40-yard dash. He can play the game very physically, very aggressively as well. And then Andrew Phillips, another one out of Kentucky, who has had a great draft process. I didn't know about him until the Senior Bowl. He did tremendous at the Senior Bowl. Went back and watched him at Kentucky, a guy that very explosive, can definitely play press man coverage, runs in the four fours, 42-inch vertical, uh, awesome athlete, a guy that plays the game the right way for a press man football team, in my opinion. These are all guys that make sense to me, you know, a little bit later on in the draft, whether it's the second or the third round. And so uh, the Jaguars, it is a good year to need corner, both in free agency and in the NFL draft. Uh, they have created a hole here. They did it so they could create more cap space to be able to bring back Josh Allen, bring back Calvin Ridley. That's what they're hoping to do. And then also kind of supplement this roster with maybe another piece or two uh, to, to see if they can put themselves over the top. We will see how it plays out here. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.